like, what up? What up? We are flying out to Ocala today. So this is Alex's first time in a plane. And we're going to talk about flying with passengers today. in the Ocala flight planning room because, well, when we got to Ocala, we decided to go get ice cream instead of film YouTube. YouTube, Freddy's Custard in Ocala. It's a toss-up. Okay, so what I'm going to do today is actually share what I have learned by flying with passengers since I am a newer pilot and then what I do now to make sure that my passengers feel comfortable. But first, I got my pilot certificate so that I can go fly, I can go see new places, the freedom, the challenge, and the learning experience you get every single time you fly. With that said, I'd love to share new experiences with other people. When I know a city and take somebody on a trip, I like to show them the city so they can experience it and you get to share that experience with them. Same thing goes for general aviation. It is absolutely amazing to get some great feedback from a passenger and for them to experience general aviation for the first time. Flying to an airport, getting coffee, getting brunch, getting lunch, whatever the case may be. It opens a whole new world for a lot of people. And since there are so few pilots relative to the actual population, not everyone gets to experience something like that. So when you do get to share it with somebody, it feels amazing. A great example of what a passenger actually feels when they're flying for the first time is something like this. So with all that said, I'm gonna start with what I've actually learned flying with passengers. So aside from taking my parents' post certificate, I spent about 20 hours flying on my own before I took somebody else. Why? Because of number one of what I've learned. Be hyper comfortable with the plane you're flying. Why would I say that? The more comfortable you are with the avionics, with the plane itself, the less of a workload it's going to be for you as the pilot when you have a passenger. Passengers are asking questions. You have to explain what's going on, explain noises, things like that. And no matter what way you slice it, it just adds to your workload. For example, I got checked out in the Piper Archer. I have not taken anybody. I'm sitting right around 10 hours. It's a personal minimum for myself to make sure I'm 100% comfortable with the avionics before getting somebody in that plane with me. Now, the 172 is a different story because I've spent a lot of time relative to a brand new pilot in the 172, which leads right over to number two, and that is your personal minimums. Before you take passengers, you've got to set your personal minimums and more importantly, stick to your personal minimums. The personal minimums are something you place to make sure that your flights are safe, that you're safe, that your plane's safe. This is more of something prior to even getting passengers in your plane to be super strong and super confident in your personal minimums and being able to say, hey, I'm pilot in command, we're not going because of X, Y, Z, and sticking to it. The last thing is actually very passenger specific once you actually have a passenger in the plane or they're already coming with you, is to clarify what the hell is going on. You spend a lot of time getting your certificate, you spend a lot of time in a plane with an instructor, and this is just for your PPL. I'm not talking about my IFR ticket, uh, commercial pilot, anything like that. You've learned a lot. You understand the noises, you feel comfortable in the cockpit. Nine times out of 10, a passenger's gonna get in your plane and have no idea what's going on which is fine. But as PIC, take the time to clarify the noises. You take off autopilot in the 172. It likes to beep at you. There's a stall warning horde when you are finishing out your flare and actually landing. For somebody that's never been in a cockpit before, all those noises can kind of cause a little bit of anxiety. What I've learned is the more preparation you take in preparing your passenger, the less workload they're going to be, the more comfortable they are. So what do I do now when I bring in a passenger? The first thing I talk about is actually selecting the passenger. Currently what I'll do is I will book one of the planes for a location I wanna to go to and plan to go record YouTube at that particular flight lounge. If somebody wants to come with me, well, what I do is make sure that they are friends and family and that I completely trust them or feel comfortable with them in the right seat of my plane. Understanding that that person is family or friend, most likely you have a good idea on whether or not they get motion sickness or can handle flying in a plane with you. While I do have puke bags in my flight bag, at the end of the day, all this extra stuff that if a passenger isn't comfortable with you or you aren't comfortable with the passenger, it just makes everything a little more challenging. Back to the workload piece. We're adding extra pieces to the pilot in command when you really don't need to. Number two of what I do now is actually ask feedback. I'll do it when I get to the airport or destination, and then of course, when I get back to where we started. 
Why? Because feedback, just as if you're in sales, is going to direct what things you need to change. Is this one passenger just saying things that they're uncomfortable with? Or is it something that maybe you should change about when you introduce a brand new passenger to a plane or general aviation? This just goes back to understanding what's going on in your passenger's head versus somebody who's actually spent time in a plane. You gotta ask feedback to do that because we can't read minds. And the last one comes from that actual feedback piece. It made me think about taking it a step further when I actually plan my flight. When we walk out to the plane together, I explain as much as I possibly can. Yes, there's already a checklist in terms of passenger departure, safety briefings, things like that, but take it a step further. Explain to them where you're going, what airport you're going to. If you can, workload permitting, after ATC talks to you, explain what they're asking for. It just gives them an idea of what's going on so that they have something to expect. Anything unexpected is going to give somebody anxiety. Most people, anxiety. That's all I got for you guys. I really hope you liked the video and I hope these are some things that you can actually incorporate into when you fly with passengers, especially if you're a new pilot. These are not the only things to do when you have passengers. These are some things that I do on my own but I'm sharing them with you because these are the things that stood out for me. I'm sure in another thousand hours, I'll either add, change, or take away certain things. Again, we're always learning, right? If you like the video, go ahead and press like. If you like this content and you want to come back for more, go ahead and press subscribe. Hope you guys have a great weekend.